recorded. I'm, I'm recording everything now. Okay. But what she said was that you told her a whole bunch of stuff and that supposedly she, you're going to help her take over my apartment. No. I didn't think so. No. My heart was broken. I was like, oh my god. No. There's, I share stuff of, with this lady. What the there's hell? There's a lot of things that are being said and I feel like I'm getting caught in between okay. them. Okay, so I don't want to catch you. I just wanted okay, to so ask you. So let me you. just tell you because... because and I, you are the resident. I emailed you, you as a restraining saw, saw. You are the resident, and so I'm telling you things, telling you things in your rights from a resident's perspective. Right. And she's coming in here, and she's telling me other things, and so I'm telling her her rights as as a tenant. Okay. I told her from the get-go, I can't do anything for you. Like, okay. I can't even kick you out. Right. I said, and I, I told her the process. I told right. her, you have rights to the apartment because you did pay rent. Right, right. You and know, a, and... Yeah. You know, I, I told her all of those things. And if we need to get to a point where both of you guys can get in here, because I don't want to be involved in the middle of this, right. but it sounds like there's things that are being said to try to sway one way or the other. First of all, I told her if she wanted to apply for an apartment here, she's more than welcome to do okay. so. And she doesn't qualify. Okay. She so, said that's what she told the cops. Because I just sat there recording no. everything. Because I was like, no. I was like, I talked to Casey. I mean, you're fair. And it's like, I don't want to, you know, it's just like, let me get it, because I didn't know if she was going to get up. So I was like, let me just ask you. She mentioned wanting to take over the apartment, and I, I told her that you don't you don't qualify, and that's not how it works. Like, it's, right. it doesn't work, like, now that you're in here, and, you know, she's going to try to take over. It, it, at the end of the day, it's, it's your apartment, and the apartment's in your name. Okay. You know and so, I mean? But like I told you, I told, the whole point, what she was charged for was from the perspective of, you're on the lease. What but do you for, mean? What she was charged for. when she when she was she was like well you know so basically she was telling she was basically telling me that you were telling her that I owed her money and this and this and this no, other than what Sharice and I ended up going to court and this was when I almost snapped I don't know how she got to the judge as I said earlier I don't know how she got to the judge. But imagine you're going in there. I didn't know the the law, landlord tenant law here in in California, because it was cost. If I talked to you know renters, advocates or whatever, they would tell me one thing, and then another legal serv free legal service would tell me another thing. So I never, I didn't know up from down. I was confused. I was scared because I didn't want to lose my place, but I didn't want to live with a terrorist, with somebody who was threatening to kill me, who was throwing away my food, who was trying to, who was uh, trying to assault my cats and then calling the cops and saying that I'm uh, making noise and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and all of that stuff, you know, just making things up and creating a hostile environment. And so when I got to the court, the judge couldn't wait. Like he was really waiting for me. Like I was watching him. There was a few others and, you know, he wasn't really, he was, he would just say yay or nay. And he would give some kind of smart ass uh, response to the, uh, the other person who, who let, who lost. And, you know, I'm thinking to myself, but when I came up there, this guy was, I mean, it wasn't just the judge. It was, and I could tell, I was like, there's something wrong with this paperwork. Like, I had to go back and get the judge to sign because he hadn't signed it. I, I mean, I didn't even know why. I was like, what is going on? And I just felt weird. My spidey senses were tingling, and I said, something's, something's off. Something's really off. And I would find out when, so when I went to court, and it was our time to go up, and as I said before, Chris Charisse, her character disturbance, she when she did she never liked being ignored. And she would wait, you know, and hold she had held all this uh what she wanted to say and you know to me and I wouldn't listen to it because she knew because it's like, okay, you know, I I've said now that you need to ignore me, but now that you're ignoring me, I gotta I gotta, you know. Uh, back it up. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, I, I, I want what I want when I want it, but I don't want you to have it. And I, it just really ro emotional roller coaster. 
So she would say, so the bailiffs, the, the police that were in there were laughing at me. The judge was laughing. At me, and he basically said, no, I already know about you. And I'm like, well, how do you know? Because she shouldn't have been able to talk to this guy at all. And it was bizarre because when I got there, they were talking like they were all best buds. And I have to say, so basically he, he saw everything in her favor. And I, <laughs> I couldn't keep my composure. I couldn't keep my composure. And I lost it. I lost it. I lost it outside of court. Because I was, I was going to handle his ass too. Because I was like, wait a minute, you allowed somebody without, there wasn't mediation or anything. There was no mediation. He basically, she accused me of trying to make her homeless, stealing her deposit, all the stuff that she had been saying for the two months to the cops and until one of the cops finally said, you're batshit crazy. That's exactly what he told her. So she was, you know, she that was a, a wound that she received that she was not happy about. This woman had been terrorizing us and had pretended you know, and as was her MO, she wanted to talk to the people to get, you know, get her word in first, get them on her side. Right. I mean, it's just so high schoolish, so childish. And so I did not receive justice and I got in a lift and I couldn't even, the only time that I felt like that was when I met my real mother who's now, uh, passed. Um, but when I rep met my real mother and she, she, there was no support from her or anything else. And she said something and I, I, <laughs> I think I did. I was, we were going to have an altercation because I just had it and uh, just meeting this woman. And it wasn't that heartwarming reunion that I had so desperately needed. And, um, I left and she just discarded me, you know, again, abandoned me again. And I was in the shower. She didn't, my mother didn't like my hair. She didn't like my body. She didn't like my dress. She, you know what I mean? She didn't like that I was fat. That's it, all of it's stress fat. I'm carrying the stress of this family that you've never, that she had never been a part of, but she never considered that. So that was the type, but it, you know, after feeling all that and not having a good reunion, I remember I was in the shower and I was crying, but there were no tears. There was no sound. And that's what I was feeling again, where you're, where you're in such a disbelief that what seemed to be an open and shut case, like I just, I couldn't, I couldn't fathom. I said, I can't do this. I said, and I remembered thinking in the lift, either we got to go or I'm going to have to take her out because I am not going to live. I've not, I've done nothing to this woman, but set a boundary. She was not, there was nothing that was kept away from her. It was me just setting a boundary. It was me showing her basically, this is still my place. You don't own it. And I remember Cherie said, I just want to see who was going to be the last one standing. Like it was a competition. And there went the journey. So I started selling my stuff. I sold my freezer. Um, I tried to get rid of the futon. Nobody wanted it. I had uh, a, a canopy for my craft fairs. I had some tables for my craft fairs. I had some chairs, you know, um, I had a stand up freezer. I, I sold those and it was bizarre, as I've said before, because this was the time where she was mad, but she knew she couldn't say anything. I was so, I was like, why? Because she was treating us like we were in a relationship, like we were in an intimate relationship, like we were married and we're not, we're not, we were never married. I've never been this woman. I didn't even know or care about her sexuality because it wasn't an issue.